just having a chat here with uh, Kevin Letiek um, from Brasserie Brittany's in France, one of our very good customers, um, who's kind enough to sort of um, participate in this sort of Q&A session. Um, and he's, um, he's a very good proponent of, of UK grown hops and especially our development hops. So he was one of the first people that came to mind that I should ask to sort of participate in, in this podcast. So if you don't mind, um, Kevin, if you'd like to introduce yourself and tell us where you're located. Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, I'm very, uh, very pleased to, to be with you today. Uh, and uh, so my, as you said, I'm, I'm, I'm from uh, France, Brittany, the west part of France. And uh, I, um, I'm 33 uh, years old and I run a, a brewery. Uh, and I work on my own, actually, uh, in this brewery uh, since two years, uh, for, two, for two years now. So, um, yeah, like you said, I... Um, I uh, I brew uh, with almost ex exclusively uh, British hops, ninety five percent maybe of British hops. So uh, I'm a very big fan of uh, uh, British ales and real ales. Uh, so I really often go to the UK and uh, to try to get some uh, inspiration. Super, super. So um, if we sort of fo follow some of the sort of questions we have. So, I mean, one of the questions is, what is your favorite hop? Which I know is a very difficult question to answer, but but in your opinion, what, what is your favorite hop you like working with? Uh, as you said, it's always a tricky question uh, because uh, every every hop, hop has, has uh, its uh, interest. But uh, I, as I said, I use uh, almost exclusively uh, British uh, British hops in, in my biz from uh, Target to, to Arlequin to through Challenger and Fargo's and so on, so um, so I, I it's hard to to just pick one of them, but I have to to admit that I love the the East Ken Golding uh, for its uh, versatility. Uh, for I think uh, every British brewer or uh, brewer bring British sized beers like me. Uh, the AKG is your kind of your uh, your most loyal assistant uh, because it fulfills every need you have in terms of aroma, uh, in terms of uh, uh, balance, uh, real ale, you know, it, it, uh, it, it allows so many combinations as well with uh, other hops with a more uh, uh, resinous green profile or floral fruity profile. So I like it very much for, for that reason, because um, you you can, I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's a good, always a good start for, for an English type of ale. Uh, in my in my case, it's my kind of my uh, mediator. Uh, um, uh, so I I think I owe it so much. But uh, this being said, um, I have discovered with the um, with the British hop development program a lot of astonishing hop, hops like uh, just uh, Holicana, uh, Mystic Archer, and so on. Harlequin was the last and was really brilliant as well uh, with a more fruit fruity profile uh, and very nice for dry hopping as well. Uh, so I think they're brilliant as well because it's kind of a mix between uh, long heritage uh, British hops and modern hops. So uh, you need to to, uh, to to keep on, uh, you know, uh, you need to, to, to follow the, um, the evolution of uh, the, the industry, of the brewing industry. And these kind of hops are, are a delight for, for us all, for everybody, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think um, Goldings is a great hop. It's a great base um, to, to develop hop character on top of if you use it as your as your sort of um, your, your base hop character, uh, or even on its own. Um, I think um, when I started at Charles Farm um, nearly ten years ago, I just found Admiral, um, which was an older variety which never really made it here. And I so I was suggesting that people trying to get um, uh, an orangey marmalade character, sort of blend Goldings and sorry, spicy orange characters blend um, Goldings for the spiciness with, with Abron for the orange character. And I think quite a few breweries had some success with that. Um, obviously, yeah. palettes have moved on a bit, but even even with these new world style beers, Goldings, I think, can add great yeah. base hot character to the beer. And then from there, whatever you add on top will then just come alive and really sing. So um, I, I wouldn't disagree with that. I also like Bramley Cross, I have to say, but I, I like yeah. <laughs> on, the, on the rub, when you rub a Bramley Cross, you get a real almost American character to it. So. Um, doesn't always come through in the beers, but I think they tend to go into malt, malt forward beers rather than mm. the hoppy characters of beers. So, um, there. And how did the French? Um, the, how does the French market receive your your English style beers and your um, the, the English hopped beers? Uh, quite good actually, because um, we uh, I think I think France um, 
maybe not ignored uh, British bears, but uh, didn't have a very good uh, knowledge of, of the British bears. So uh, the people were quite, you know, uh, curious uh, to, to, to taste it at first. And uh, um, we've been uh, overwhelmed by uh, uh, American type IPAs. And, and, and so I think uh, even if it, uh, in, maybe in the in the nineties in France, uh, people discovered hops with mm. the the IPAs, uh, but uh, I think m most of them got a little bit bored with it. So, so uh, so it was quite well received, and uh, and uh, um, you know I still try to uh, to communicate uh, on it, and uh, you know it's yeah it works quite well. Yeah, so I, I mean I know Normandy it, it has quite a big cider production uh, origin um, history is it the same in Brittany is it big cider there as well or is that more north yeah 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 definitely um to be you know if if you want to make it quite simple you Normandy and Brittany were um beer ciders makers and yeah. uh, the south and the east of France of course uh, wine makers but uh today uh beer is everywhere in the country like um, most countries mm. uh like in the UK or everywhere, but uh, um, you still have a strong, um, a strong tradition of uh, cider making, yeah, in Britain. Yeah. Uh, but beer is, is is growing and going to overtake that, yes. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it has uh, already done that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Um, so I mean, then we move on from hops to sort of you've, again an almost impossible question to answer. Your favorite beer? Yeah, <laughs> that's a tricky one because. Uh, you know, it's not the first time I've been asked this question, but um, each time you you realize that it depends on the context and uh, the environment you're in. Mm. Uh, at the moment you, you you taste the beer, so maybe uh, sometimes I, I tasted some average to honest beers, but uh, that seemed brilliant because I was in the right place with the right person and the right pub. So, um, but I, I think I, um, I'd go for um, Sussex Best uh, from Harvey's. Mm. Uh, um, I really liked it, this one, and I, I still re remember uh, where I was when I first uh, tried it. Uh, uh, I can't remember the name of the pub, but it was one uh, one one pub in Lewis uh, near near Brighton. Uh, it, I, I just remember the, the this feeling in, in my mouth to to have this perfect real ale, uh, best bitter, um, you know, with this. Crispy, uh, crispy taste uh, on the malt, Mary's water, crispy taste with wonderful uh, crystal malt as well, and this uh, very, um, very, uh, you know, uh, dry finish, uh, hope forwarded dry finish, so typical. So, so I mean, it seems so British to me, uh, in a way, and uh, I, I think I tried it in a, in a rooftop on a sunny day, just. You know, just before going back to friends by the ferry. So, yeah, I, I, if I have to to pick one, I'd say I'd say uh, Sussex best. And I I like a lot of you know Harvey's beer. Mm. Yeah, I, I spent um, an afternoon on a, in a Harvey's pub just off the Strand in London. Um, the whole front windows opened up like an old butcher shop, and um, mm. we went in to have one beer, and the, the beer was so nice that the the best yeah. was. And we just spent a few hours just sort of just. Twirling away the day, it was very busy and warm outside, and it was quite cool inside there. So we, um, we we spent time just sat drinking that kind of stuff. So, I mean, do you get many different beers into your, into Brittany into your area of France? Do, are there many other styles of beer to try? Oh, um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, do you mean uh, myself or in general in France? In general, in general, just in general. general. Um, yeah, I'm, I think um, we don't really, as you said. Um, have um, a proper uh, beer uh, tradition, uh, brewing tradition in, in France. So uh, we, uh, I think all the French brewers uh, picked something uh, in, in Belgium, something in Germany, something in, in, in England, uh, something from, from the United States as well. So uh, it's very, uh, it's quite, uh, people are getting very, uh, uh, um, you know, they try to always to to reinvent them, themselves to, to try new things. We all we have a lot of sour beers today uh, on the market, so it's very dynamic. Excellent, excellent. So, I mean, the French um, you're obviously well known for your food as well as as, as well as your your, your beverages. Um, so, I mean, what would you what kind of what would you your favorite food and beer pairing then? 
Um, <laughs> that's funny because I, I'm not I'm not a, some random French guy. I, I, <laughs> I like um, I like British gastronomy as well. So okay. uh, I I know that might that might sound uh, a bit odd <laughs> for an English guy, but uh, I, I, I would say porter uh, uh, porter stout and uh, blue cheese. Okay. Uh, that's really my my favorite. Uh, never bored of this pairing. It's uh, I think a nice balanced porter with a, with a good uh, farmers Shropshire, Tilton, uh, the, the the Irish cheese, uh, the um, Cashel blue as well. Okay. Uh, that works well. Um, we have very good blue cheese blue cheeses uh, in France as well, and uh, there are you know you can you can always finish uh, on a good cheese, and if you if you if you find a good beer to go with it, uh, that would that will be quite surprise surprising for French people because we are so used to to drink wine uh, with um, with a cheese. But uh, um, no, yeah, it's it's quite good. But um, like you know, um, like I always say, it depends uh, also on the temperature of the beer and and um, the level of uh, carbonation. The uh, you need. I mean, I I prefer it. Um, you know, uh, in a cask version, uh, to to eat with it. But uh, yeah. that's very personal. Personal, but yeah. yeah. And um, I, I tried something um, lately, which uh, worked quite well as well. Um, I brewed um, a, a peachy pale ale uh, for uh, for the, the last last Christmas, and uh, I tried it with uh, oysters. And okay. that was quite surprising because I'm not very fond of uh, oysters and beer, but the uh, iodine and, and the peat yeah. uh, were, you know, going along very well. That's strange because normally they recommend um, either stout or porter for oysters. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the famous oyster stouts and things. Um, I mean, I, I've had a, I went to a tasting and it was an American brewer and it was uh, their brown ale and oysters, which I don't eat shellfish, but as I was there, I, I didn't. Um, it, but the saltiness from the from the oyster really went quite well with a with a porter. So to say that um, a pale or a light beer went with it, that that's quite interesting and, and quite good as well. Because with a lot of the new style of beers, I mean, we're breaking tradition and breaking stereotypical ideas. So um, as I said about the Bramling Cross, I used to brew a beer that was a light beer in the summertime of Bramling Cross, which I was told would never work, but it it worked very well. And so a lot, so the same with like the matching of the food. It's um, a lot of it's I guess to do with um, oh yeah. Uh, uh, suggesting as well, which um, uh, yeah, um, uh, yeah, everybody's palate's different. Luckily, we would be all drinking Cronenberg, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do agree with that. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, to talk about beer, I mean, where's your favorite beer destination? Where do you like to drink beer? Um, the UK, of course. <laughs> um, it's not to, to flatter you guys because I think you you, you quite do it yourself. Uh, Quite quite efficiently, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, uh, um, I think all the the heritage uh, around beer uh, in the UK is uh, is huge. And uh, I remember personally remember as uh, as quite a young fella uh, when I first tasted uh, a real ale. Uh, I told to myself, okay, um, let's forget everything you 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 knew about beer. Uh, that's the the real deal. Um, so I also you know realized the very first. Uh, for the very first time, the uh, the importance of uh, CO2 uh, saturation and temperature uh, of the beer. So, uh, so yeah, uh, outside the UK, and of course, I always try to 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 visit um, you know historical pubs, uh, nice pubs, nice place to to enjoy a, a good point. So yeah, I don't say that I never enjoy you know like good fresh sparkling pale ale on a on a sunny day uh i do Absolutely. <laughs> but um you know if you really want to have fun because that's all it's what it's all about uh, uh and go deeply into the, the material of, of the flavors and, and everything uh, and all of, the, all of the saying i definitely i always want to real ale. so uh yeah if you if you want a proper real ale, real ale, you go to the uk yeah, thanks well yeah, I, I wouldn't disagree with that i i, I um Obviously, I like cask beer. And, um, I find the carbonation of some of the packaged beers a little bit too much for me because obviously that does 
provide some mouthfeel and some flavor as well. So back to you know the food thing, if you've got a heavily carbonated beer, that's going to affect how your food tastes with it as well. So that's, you need to, if you're actually doing a food and beer match, you need to think about the, the CO2 levels in your beer and things as well. But yeah, I, I can't wait for it. Well, by the time this gets seen, I expect um, pubs will be a bit more open, but um, today the pubs open up. So I, I tend to go have a, a nice pint of cast beer. I mean, I don't really drink much at home. Um, I prefer to socialize and drink. So I'm looking forward to going to see some people I've not seen for a while and, and have a pint of cast beer and then. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, in France, it seems like there's more and more sort of festivals. I know a lot of my little village fates and, and festivals, but I mean, I've been lucky enough to go to Lyon Beer Festival a couple of times, which I think is a great festival because the brewers are there serving their beer and you can have a chat with them. And then I found a little brewery down in the seventh, uh, the Cévennes Valley um, in a place called Bissage, which is in Lagarde. There's a little, about 25 brewers turn up to this and it's um, it's usually May and it's usually nice and warm, whereas it's not been so warm here in the UK and it's it's quite nice. But um, there's many styles of beer brewing brewed that you can try now. So, um, so yeah, it's, uh, yeah. So, so again, destination uh, can be a bit like, you know, it depends on the time and the place. I mean, you go to the best yeah. place in the world and if you're not having a good time, it's not great. Whereas same with the beer, you know, if you're drinking the best beer, but it's not, you know, enjoying yourself, then it's not the best beer you've stopped. So, yeah, yeah. I, it, I think beer drinking is all about experience and, and, and it's very emotional. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. That's a sensitive thing. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, as it's so sensitive and emotional, what's your best, what's, what's your favorite pub in the UK? Um, I remember this pub in the, um, in London's East End called the One Lock Arms. Um, it's a, a traditional ale house uh, from the 19th century. Uh, and uh, I, I think I, I first visited this pub um, with a friend and uh, had a very, uh, you know, very nice, very nice time there. Uh, it's one of those pubs with a fantastic range of cask ales and uh, uh, it's such a nice atmosphere. I remember, I remember it was so uh, cozy and quiet at four, and uh, absolutely packed at five. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, in ten minutes, it got you know it was just crazy. Yeah. So th th there's no screen, uh, just noise of people chatting, laughing, and just you know uh, talking about th the day of work. A uh, very good mix as well. Of blue and white color, very good mix of young and, and, and you know elder people. So, yeah, I, uh, I I I have a good good memory of it. So uh, I definitely want to go back uh, next time. Uh, next time I'm uh, able to uh, to go to the UK. Yeah, hopefully it's not too long away then. Uh, yeah, yeah so, so yeah. hopefully. Yeah, well, there's uh, plenty of good pubs. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in um in my here in Brittany, there's um. There's a pub as well. Uh, I know it's not the UK, but uh, That's good. Uh, it's fine. Yeah. I have to mention it because it's a really good pub. It's in uh, Rennes, the main city of Brittany. Uh, it's called uh, the Westport Inn. Okay. Uh, it has everything of a, an Irish pub, a small Irish pub. Uh, everything, you know, everybody's standing at the bar, um, chatting uh, in French or in Breton uh, because you have a lot of um, uh, st students uh, of the Breton University. Uh, there, so it's it's nice. It's, uh, it's everything of a popular pub. So uh, maybe next time you 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 come in France and visit Brittany, you you need to uh, to stop stop by. I do. I've not actually been to Brittany before. I seem to go straight to the south, but um, I, I need a trip around Normandy and Brittany. I think so. I'll, I'll definitely be calling on you at some stage when we can travel again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so back onto the brewing side. What's the item? What's the one item in the brewery that you couldn't live without? The speaker for music. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, this is where you and I disagree, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I cannot imagine brewing uh, without music. Uh, um, you know, everything you do uh, in the day, I always find some music to to go along with. So yeah, no, um, I'm not. You know, very. Um, you know, I, I can sell uh, all the. Um, all, all the kegs and everything and have new ones i'm you know i'm not sensitive on this just uh no my uh my uh work atmosphere is very important so yeah <laughs> a speaker for music yeah, yeah. Well, so when i was running the brewery i, I yeah I, I love music but i mean it would just annoy annoy me a lot because i would come out in the brewery and the guys working when i have the speaker raring blaring loud and they couldn't hear oh, yeah. the pump, pumps running dry under back overflow and they couldn't actually hear any of the noises of the brewery which 
I, from my personal experience, I think it's quite important to know what's going on sound wise in the brewery as well. But yeah, I, I guess when you're racking beer, that's pretty boring. So, so definitely. But I, I have a, I have a very small brewery, so I, I can do both: listen to the music and listen to the. There you to go. The well, yeah, and also you're not relying on other people to do your job, so you can keep an eye on things while there's music yeah. on. So yeah, that's that's fair enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> so, what's your favorite song or, or artist that that you would play during a brew day? Um, kind of a. Punk, punk rock kind of guy. I love, um, yeah, English punk rock a lot. So I have a strong um, tendency for the Clash. Um, they're, I think, so um, emblematic of a period in the UK. Uh, difficult one, uh, I assume, um, uh, for for social rights, uh, but very inspirational one for us artists as well. Uh, I really like their, you know, uh, message, strong lyrics and uh, and melodies. Um, so yeah, I'd say I'd say the clash, but um, you know I have very uh, different uh, uh, influences. As my uh, father was a big uh, uh, Bruce Springsteen fan and Rolling Stones oh, wow. fan as well. So so yeah, all, all of that. But uh, honestly, when I'm working, yeah, uh, I try to um, to uh, to discover new things as well. Uh, that's always a good chance to uh, to do that. Yeah, well, I mean, the Clash is one of my favorite bands, so, and I, you know, I was, I luckily enough, I saw them in the in the in in 1981 or something. So, um, but I'm a little bit older than you, um, and yeah, I was into into punk big time. Well, I still am. And yeah. So when I when I'm cooking, the stereo goes on, and that kind of stuff goes loud. So, um, yeah, my wife goes, oh, he must be cooking if if this is going on so loud. And she she goes upstairs, but yeah, yeah it's pretty it's, much the same here. Yeah, I mean, I'm not not a fan of Bruce Springsteen, I have to say, but there you go. Um, uh, I, I can appreciate what he does because I, I I lived in New Jersey for a long time as a child, so everybody loved Bruce Springsteen, and that probably yeah. what, what turned me against him to some extent. So, um, and they didn't understand English punk music, so um, yeah, rightly so in those days, I guess. So it was different, yeah. different things. So, but yeah, we'll have to get together, have a beer, and listen to some music. You know, when when we when we can catch up again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, lots of things to to to, to chat about. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yes. Yeah. So, um, so if you were in the brewing industry, what would you be doing? Uh, I think I would uh, probably be doing something similar, um, like uh, a baker, cheese maker, or something like this, uh, at a craft level, of course. Uh, because you know, uh, starting before starting uh, my brewery, I I worked as a social worker uh, for seven years in here in France, and. Uh, you know, I liked it, uh, but um, uh, it didn't uh, suit me at the end because you, you have too much paperwork. Uh, it's not, um, I mean, it's not that, yeah, there was, I was just a little bit fed of it. So I uh, I, I need to express myself fully uh, with ideas and two hands. So brewing is definitely uh, the good material for that. But uh, yeah, that could have been something, something a bit different, but uh, like, yeah, cooking or baking or something like this and do you do any baking or cheese making as a hobby in your spare time or are you no time to do things like that no i have no time to do that i i cook uh, yeah. i cook everything for for the family uh but uh you know i used to to, to bake myself a lot uh and uh, i even tried to to do some cheese uh which uh, was not so great i have to say so <laughs> but uh, no i have no time to do it uh, unfortunately oh well, maybe one day eh? yeah so, who inspires you in brewing then? Oh, um, somebody who never brewed in his life. Uh, that's my dad, uh, because um, uh, he was a really good cook. Uh, that was his job too, and he teach me everything you need to know about about, about balance uh, in cooking, uh, how to balance uh, acidity, bitterness, uh, sugar, and so on. So, yeah, that principle. Uh, leads me uh, to uh, uh, today. I mean, every every time I try to, to create a, a new recipe, I am always looking for uh, balance and everything. Uh, so that's a personal point of view. But for me, you know, uh, hope for what it be, uh, more for what it be, uh, must be balanced at some point. Uh, so uh, that's what my dad always told me: keep the balance, keep the balance. So uh, I've always tried to do it while cooking, and then I. I I tried to do it uh, when I started the brewery. So, um, so yeah, I, I think um, you know there's this uh, other thing that because British style ales uh, were and 
still are very unusual in France. So uh, for long, we only had brands from big industrial breweries. Mm. And as uh, you know, as a, a, a beer drinker, uh, I couldn't find something that suited me. Uh, so I, try, I, I, you know, I started to, to brew for myself and then for the friends and then for the neighbors. And then my wife told me, okay, man, you, you should do something now <laughs> because you're spending most of your time uh, most of your free time on it, so so uh, go ahead and uh, and, uh, and start your brewery. But uh, but yeah, I think you, if you, I mean, I, I came from from cooking to to brewing. I think that's quite the same thing because when you are brewing, you're kind of cooking as well. Uh, okay. uh, so a, a good cook could could be a a real good brewer, and the uh, inverse is also true. So so yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I think uh, I think the, the key word that you just kept repeating there was um, balance. You find so many beers nowadays that are, are, are I mean, they're they're okay, but you would have one beer or, or half a beer, and then you would you wouldn't go back to it because there's not really any balance. But so a nice balanced beer it's, makes it more drinkable and certainly quaffable. So, from a brewing perspective, more saleable. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, definitely. About, it's yeah. about selling your beers, taking your business, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I suppose you got into brewing because you like cooking, like play. You've pretty much said it's what just got you into brewing. Yeah. So, um, just... uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's um, I'm I'm still cooking to, uh, those days. I mean, uh, yeah. I uh, like, like I said before, I, uh, I I always try to uh, find find some time to to cook. So uh, so yeah, I um, you know I I I feel uh, I feel good <laughs> when I cook. I feel good when I brew. So. But uh, yeah, yeah. So like I said before, uh, cooking was um, was the, the. I mean that that got me into into brewing. Yeah. Well, I I find half the enjoyment is letting other people um, taste your what you've made and, and enjoy it. You get you get more satisfaction from other people enjoying it than almost trying yourself. And totally in the brewery, what people used to ask me because they friends would tell you work in a brewery, thinking that you can sit and drink beer all day long, which obviously can't because there's far too many jobs and, and, and everything's got to be, you know, absolutely sterile and, and, and spot on. Um, and people would say, you know, what's your favourite part about work, working in a brewery, which isn't one of our questions. And, and I always say it's watching somebody at the bar ordering another pint of your beer um, because that means you've done a good job and that they yeah. like enough to repeat order. And that, then that's probably one of the best things about working in the brewery is that people just always going back to your products because they know they're going to get a good product. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But uh, that that's something you know. Uh, you uh, if you have not not nine nine persons um, who you know just uh, sign to you that uh, your beer is, is very really good, really fant- fantastic, and the tenth uh, is is not uh, has not the same opinion at the very beginning. Uh, that affects you. That's something uh, you need to to deal with. And uh, you know the more the more you. Uh, you uh, you get experience in brewing, and the more you you accept others' uh, uh, preferences, tastes. So so yeah, yeah. But uh, it's quite yeah. You have self. You know you uh, you try to, uh, to find some self satisfaction, of course, uh, when people taste your, your beers. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Um, do you manage to go to beer festivals, and do you have a favorite beer festival? Uh, I couldn't say because, uh, to be honest with you, I've never been to a beer festival, so uh, oh, I'm, not a, yeah, I'm not a, a festival uh, festival guy. Uh, I've done music festival, but no beer festival at, at this time. But uh, I need, I really, really, really need to go, but as a as a tourist, uh, because yeah. I don't, I don't really want to go. Uh, um, I, I've been invited, of course, for a few uh, a few festivals, but. Uh, um, that's um you know it's quite hard because i have two two young girls as well mm. so um you need to spend all, all the weekend uh so it's always hard but uh, i need to go as a tourist there is a, a beer festival um 40 kilometers from here in uh, samalo uh which is quite you know uh, quite known uh from, from french brewers and um, european brewers as well so you, as you said um previously um most um french uh beer festivals you can meet the brewers yep. so it's nice but i really need to go i, I need to go next time <laughs> i'll do maybe it start, maybe start with the, the, the gabf in london um, maybe not yeah. this summer but next summer um yeah that's a you could lose a few days there i think <laughs> certainly <laughs> the trade day certainly the trade day um it's okay it's not quite so busy and crazy and you can go visit um 
they yeah. taste some different beers. Oh, there's always the the London, the sort of the craft festival as well. But um, yeah, okay. uh, I, I've been to Barcelona Beer Festival, and to be fair, that I, I had tried in the past um, uh, lambics um, like Cantillon yeah. and things, like that, and I've never really. I didn't really appreciate them or understand them. And then I was at the Barcelona Beer Festival and every beer was a six and a half percent American IPA. And I was with a German guy who worked for Vine and Malt and he sort of, he liked the sours and the lambics. So we started sort of cleansing our palate with every couple of beers, having one of those and actually started to really enjoy them. So, you know, I got an education out of that. So you, there's yeah. always something somewhere on the way. So, um, yeah, I, I can understand. I'm not a huge fan of beer festivals myself because the the beer can can be um, of indifferent quality, shall we say, occasionally. Um, and yeah. if you spend money on a beer and you've got to pour it away, it's not very <laughs> not well, much fun. So yeah, yeah I mean, a, a good a very good pub can be um, your kind of a beer festival as well. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I'm often to try different types of beers, but again, it goes back to sort of the time and place, isn't it? So yes. So I mean, briefly, just talked about. Um, some hobbies and things. What what did, do you do outside of the brewery then? If you do ever get any free time with two young children? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm almost three, so. <laughs> oh right, okay. Well, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, I um I try to to do some sports. Uh, obviously, I I as I said, I uh, I I love music, so I uh, try to go uh, to concert. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, sports is uh, is leading. Leading me through to the to the through the weekend because I'm um, a season ticket holder uh, at uh, the local club uh, in the French uh, Ligue 1. So so um, so yeah, football is definitely something uh, I like. You know, since I'm 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 five or six, uh, it's uh, you know most of the time it's something that you you uh, your father uh, liked or something like this. So yeah, and um, I, I like to go to the stadium. A lot. Uh, it's quite the same uh, same atmosphere. Uh, I mean, you, you, when you you've tried tried it, it's like a good pub. You need to go back uh, because the, the atmosphere is, is is brilliant. And so yeah, I um I I, I remember this um one of the lot very big games uh, big games uh, two years ago. Uh, I saw it was in the UEFA Cup, uh, Stade René against Arsenal. Uh, and that was brilliant because I think the the, the English fans uh, um, didn't know <laughs> how, 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 how you know how much noise we we, we could do. So it was really good, really nice experience for me. Yeah. How, how big is the stadium? How many people fit into the stadium? Uh, it's uh, thirty thirty thousand. Oh, it's quite big then. It's it's yeah 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 it's quite yeah, big. yeah yeah it's um, and um, you uh, you have uh, you know. It's, more or less um, English uh, architecture, so nice. um, uh, yeah, you we are very close to the to the pitch, uh, so people are you know very passionate here, and yeah. Uh, so yeah, we you know it was we had very very hard uh, hard years, but uh, we uh, recently won the the French Cup uh, against PSG okay. after being two goal down. So something you you, you come back uh, with the, you know. Some great, you know, feelings. <laughs> yeah, I mean, here we only really hear about in French football, PSG, uh, Monaco, and maybe Lyon, people like that. But, uh, you know, I we'll have to look. I don't. I, 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 I'm not. Well, I, I look at football, but I'm not a huge football supporter. So, um, I, although I, I, I like all sport, I don't pay much attention to the leagues. But I'll have to have a look to see how uh, how Ren are doing. So. Yeah. Uh, you know, but a, a good pub and a, and a and a good football game, uh, you know, that's a, that's a good combination as well. Absolutely, but the problem is here: that if you go to a pub, they go to the wrong pub before the game. You might get beaten. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That almost um, that, that happened to me once. Uh, I was in um, uh, Southampton for a game, just to, yeah. with friends to to enjoy a, a Premier League game, and uh, we uh, we picked some random pub. And uh, five minutes after, all the away fans just came came in. They were really, you know, um, I think they they've had some beers before. Absolutely, so, yeah. but it was nice. I mean, and, and that was quite funny. We got into it. Yeah, it's, it, it, again, it's about enjoying, isn't it? So, so do you brew any um, sort of standard beers, or do you experiment all the time with different beers? Oh, um, I, I always ex try to experiment um, different beers. I I think. Um, I will always uh, keep on brewing uh, British style beers, but uh, 
Uh, I recently uh, did um, a, a smash uh, single malt, single hop uh, beer, a more yeah. with more, um, you know, a more um, American profile, of course. And uh, recently, I, I brewed um, a wheat ale as well, uh, which which was my first time. I did, you know, hundreds of tryouts yeah. uh, because I found it um, uh, too sugared uh, at the beginning. And uh, you know, the the wheat I don't use it that much in the other base because. Uh, uh, it's very sweet, but it's too sweet for me. Uh, but uh, I think I, I, I found something quite interesting with the, the, the hops uh, from the uh, we, we were talking about before the, with the, the Harlequin yeah. on a dry opening on a wet ale. Uh, that yeah, that was quite good, and I really liked this um, you know this um, this finish uh, from from the, the Harlequin uh, on on the weight. Uh, and what sort of um, what sort of aroma and flavor do you think you got from the Harlequin? Oh, I, I, I had a very fruit fruit passion uh, forwarded uh, aroma. Uh, it was it was not um, so so as intense as an American uh, hop. I mean, more in a British style, mm -hmm. a little bit of uh, of green green and um, and cedar as well. Uh, but um, yeah. You have, you have this this fruity profile, uh, which is nice, and uh, but it's quite dry uh, on the mouth, so uh, I, I liked it. I liked it, but I, um, you know, uh, I did a quite light uh, uh, dry opening, so because I didn't want it to be uh, to be a, a, a white IPA. So. How far did you um, ferment it out then? What was your final gravity? Uh, the former gravity was uh, one point. Uh, 1.050. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it uh, it finished it finished at uh, 12. Okay. So, so quite dry. Yeah. Yeah. So that was about four, four and a half percent, four point eight. Yeah, yeah, four, yeah. Four, 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 four point eight. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Um, well, the, the, just the, there's another question. It says Fuggles or Goldings, but you've already explained Goldings. So I should be the Goldings. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I use Fuggles as well, of course. Uh, yeah. I use it in my my porter uh, and uh, in the in the the milk stout uh, I'm brewing. Uh, but yeah, Golding, of course. Um, that's like I say, so versatile. And uh, I, I I use um, I mainly use uh, East Kent Golding, but uh, I think uh, there are some derivatives from it to nowadays now from Slovenia and uh, uh, we've got Styrian Goldings which is Savinsky Goldings I mean that the story of that is that um, in the I think it was 1920s the the traditional Slovenian varieties had disease and they had to pull it all out and they contacted the British uh, thinking they were buying a Goldings and the British just gave them a, a Fuggles but because of the, the the climate and the environment the the Fuggles Perform differently, and that's where sort of Savinsky Golding and Asturian Goldings uh, started came from. And then they've since since bred because that's got some disease issues. They've since bred um, other varieties, which they're still calling Styrian Goldings. But, um, then in the UK, there's something like 14 or 12 or 14 different Goldings varieties, really. Um, but they're also similar. It's very difficult to tell them apart. Um, it's getting Goldings a little bit special because of where it's grown on sandy soil down in, in sort of Canterbury. And there's only it's, well, it had a European area of designation to it, but whether a geographical de geographical designation, but now we're not in the EU, I guess it's still got that designation. Um, so there's only about four or five farms can grow East Kent Goldings down in near Canterbury. Um, okay. okay. So, and that, that that's the sort of the, the story around all that kind of stuff. But we grow Goldings up here, and when you know when you can come up again, um, we'll go around a couple of hop farms and have a look at um, some hops and oh, yeah. some bits. So. Um, yeah, I mean, because yeah. you've been here, you've been here once yeah, in, in, the, in the deepest, darkest, darkest January and rubbed some hops to try yeah. some different things. Um, yeah. But it was you know, probably not the best, uh, the best time. But yeah, it depends when you can get yeah, away I'd, with your children stuff. So. I'd like to 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 come back on a you know like September for you know, or, or October. That, that'd be nice. But um, most of the time, Jan January is the is is the month where you you, you know quiet, you can. Yeah. Uh, Try to do something else and brewing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, I won't keep you much longer. Um, so what's next for your brewery, and what what do you think you're going to be doing? Um, I don't make many plans actually. So um, you know, 
I'm, I'm still a young, very young brewer, um, so I, I, it's hard for me to uh, to, uh, to, to, say, to say anything. But um, I try to, to to stay the same. I really want to um, to uh, to keep on brewing British styles beers and uh, to uh, to uh, to be uh, really um, uh, really honest in uh, what I'm doing. So I uh, don't have many many plans uh, of of growing at the moment because of the the. the the sanitary crisis and so we i mean we don't know uh what's going to be in the in the next years uh how the situation is going to evolve so so i i think i'm not the only one to uh to uh to step aside a little bit and uh and wait for you know for, to to know uh to know uh, what, what are what are, what are going to be the consequences the real consequences the economical consequences so mm-hmm. so yeah and uh, i i think i i like to work you know, by myself. So, so uh, it's uh, it's another thing to um, to you to uh, to hire uh, your first uh, employee. So uh, uh, I still don't know, to be honest. Yeah, for for the moment, uh, I'm really good. Uh, you know, uh, I, that that's okay for me uh, to to be small. Um, that's okay for me to to sell my beers um, directly to, to customers. That's uh, I mean, uh, probably two uh, two beers out of three are direct. Uh, you know, are, are sold uh, uh, directly to customers. So, um, so I like I like this. And uh, as I say, then I have, I have young kids. So, I mean, you you need to um, you need to, to to spend time with them. As Absolutely. Well, so. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, well, as I, I said, it's a very interesting chat. And it's gone on far longer than I thought it would do. So, um, it just it's uh, it's difficult not to not speak to you because uh, it's so engaging. So, but um, but but thanks for coming on and speaking to us. Um, We'll, Thank you. Uh, and we'll definitely have a beer and listen to music and, and look at some ops at some stage. Um, hopefully not too distant future. Um, you know, I guess this summer is going to be out, but maybe um, in January if, if it's good or, or next summer or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's be uh, 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 optimistic. <laughs> optimistic. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. No, wait. I, uh, yeah, I really want to come back uh, as soon as I can uh, yes. because uh, I really miss the, um, the, the, the UK in general. Uh, so, so yeah, um, yeah, as soon as it's safe, uh, I'll be back. Excellent, excellent. Right, well, enjoy the rest of your afternoon and evening, and, um, I'll, well, I'm sure we'll be in touch uh, in the near future anyway, for various things, so um, thanks very much. Thank you, Andrew. Cheers, Kevin. See you later. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye-bye.